poppin' YouTube, it's your boy Son Twisted. Welcome to episode 12.5.1.2 of the Twisted wow. Perv podcast, aka episode 13. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> 12.5.1.2 ridiculous very ridiculous but uh got, it's, got still your... <laughs> it's still beta it's still beta yeah hey that's this that's more we can say for uh, some of this crap that's come out recently but um got your man uh goat the great as always that is i and we got my boy the hawk yeah, special guest about. today the hawk the hawk nice Oh, you said what's up to the people, man? What's up, man? What's going on, y'all? Yeah, and maybe wifey might might be on the podcast, depending on <laughs> depending on if we don't offend her by what we by what we're talking <laughs> about. So we're gonna jump into a first topic that Goat actually brought up: prostitution. Wait, well, before we uh, before we get into that, uh, wifey, or you know, aka her name is Crystal. <laughs> uh, she just wanted to, you know, say hello. Oh, good. Hello, how are you? Hey, Crystal, what's up? Not bad. Hi, Crystal. Hello. hello. Feeling feeling better today? A little better. Uh, good right. to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so prostitution should it be legalized in New York? Yes, no. Why? Why would you legalize it? Why would you not? Your thoughts. You want to? You want me to set that off, go or you want to? Well, yeah, I'd like to hear where you stand on it. Um, I honestly haven't given given a, a lot of thoughts of prostitution. Mm-hmm. Personally, my, my my initial answer would be yes, only because I believe anything that has to do with you doing something with your body mm-hmm. that you're not forcing on somebody else should be legalized. Whether it's with a prostitution, drug use, whatever. As long as you're doing whatever to yourself. Nobody should be able to tell you what you can and can't do to or with your body. Now, no. on, on, the, on the other hand, uh-huh. there are some issues that arise, such as STDs being spread and, and that sort of thing, that prostitution being legalized can, can cause basically an epidemic of, of something like that, which would be a problem. Right. So um, I mean I don't know I haven't really given it much thought I would say yes but like I said we'd have to look at all of those all of those issues as far as, and not just that you know if you got prostitutes now in your neighborhood mm-hmm. or what else might be coming into your neighborhood you know it, it might be more heavy drug use and crime and you know bringing down your property values unsafe for your kids right all right. these type all these type of things right so one of one of the the main questions that I had for you know anyone that would support prostitution now. Would you say that it should be confined to, okay, a prostitute can only have business relations, go over certain places like, say, Craigslist where it happens, or should it be within the confines of you go to a, for lack of a better term, whorehouse, or should these whores be allowed to walk the streets and, you know, pick up Johns in cars and give a guy a blowjob on the alley? You know, like, is is that how it because it's legal so there is there's no governing factor as to how these prostitutes can i guess conduct business so if you were to be in a city such as new york where it is legalized how exactly would you define how this prostitution is allowed to be conducted you know between john and whore <laughs> uh, i don't know i get i mean for me I, if it was to be legalized i think there would have to be some kind of governance over it simply because again you know any random person doing any random thing, you, you can have problems occur. So you don't want you don't want to see filthy whores, you know, all, all stumbling out of houses, you know, when you're on your way to work or your kids on your way to school. You don't want to see that. In, Maybe in, I in do want to see that. Well, you might wanna, you 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 might want to see that, but you know, the average you know parent whatever doesn't want to see that. You don't want to see that in your neighborhood. You don't want these whores walking around, you know, bringing down the value of your neighborhood and all of that. You don't want to see that. So right. I think there would have to be some kind of governance where it's like, okay, like maybe you would have to get a, a license to run a, a brothel uh-huh. and the business would have to be conducted behind closed doors where you're not putting it in the public's face. Right. Yeah, I don't, and, I think and, you know, maybe even there'd have to be some, you know, like drugs, uh, not drugs, you know, um, like STD testing and all that to make sure that you're not spreading drugs. Cause that's, that's actually illegal if you, ha- if you know that you have an STD. Right. Well, and, you're right. just, and you're just spreading it around to people, yeah. so there would have to be something 
to take, you know, those measures. You'd have to be giving out condoms and all this type of stuff. So I think that there, there would have to be some type of governance behind it. Because, you know, on Craigslist, you don't know who the hell you're meeting. You mean these, these filthy rat bag bum bitches and, and, and niggas in the street that you don't know what the hell they was doing right. know, yesterday or who they was doing it with. And, and you're having sex with them for money and then you're having sex with the next person and you're spreading all types of crap around. So, yeah. There would have to definitely be some governance on it. Well, I think that, like, I mean, and I mean, I've, I've watched for, like enough. I don't know, like, real sex and all kinds of other specials on brothels and things that happen in other places. And Perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, goat. <laughs> goat <converter. laughs> okay. That was, that was actually, actually so twisted, so twisted so that that <laughs> but it's okay. I, I, that I am, and I, I, I hold that with a very high, high, you know, like. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> but no. But serious. I mean, I, I think the only weird thing about it is that at least in, in this city, especially, we, it'd be kind of weird getting uh probably taxed for a blowjob. You know, a blowjob costs fifteen ninety nine. Like, <laughs> it's like because once you once you get the government involved, it's it or you know it becomes legal. That just takes on a whole other animal. And I mean, from what like you see in specials and things like that, like places that actually do run, you know, supposed like professional brothels. Usually right. those girls are the, the people who are there, some of the cleanest, you know what I'm saying, persons you would probably in, engage with. Probably more clean than you engage in when you just go meet a chick at a bar and pick right. her up and, you know what I'm saying, you have a little one night fling. So, you know, I mean, as a for as for those day walker or night walker, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> night walkers, what is it, vampires? <laughs> Zombie whores, I don't know. Nice. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> they would probably definitely have to cease and desist if it was if it became legal. Yeah, but nobody wants a whore walking down the street in the neighborhood. No one. You can't say that. Right. And there are some people who would, who would love to see that that whore walking down the street so they could get a piece. Well, of yeah, it. the single guy who's like fishing, but I mean, just on on a, on a, on a general like on a large scale, you know, like yeah, if community. you live there, if you live there, you don't want to see that right like, coming exactly. down the block. Not the guy who's like slow creeping through your area. Oh, you definitely don't want you don't definitely don't want that creeper. I don't know. <laughs> you, you don't know what that guy he's looking for, you know. So, that, you know, prostitution is a very interesting uh, topic because it's it, it ranges because it's like you know some people feel that prostitution should be legal because you know it's something that's definitely not hurting anybody. You know, like right. it's something that two consenting adults engage in behind closed doors on their own personal time. And I mean, what we've seen in our own society and our own like social media is that. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. Everybody engages in prostitution. Like, right. you got you have these senators who come out like they get they get three and four different high priced whores coming out saying, "Oh yeah, I I, I guzzled his cum. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm <laughs> saying." Probably it's guzzled like, hers. Probably guzzled. He probably guzzled hers as well. So <laughs> you also have the guys that come out and like have these these guy male escorts. So, like, so you know, we we what we've learned about our current society is that prostitution is not going anywhere. So I mean, right. for there to be heavy penalization through the legal system in the majority of the states, I think it is kind of you know. Barbaric this day and age. Yeah, I guess Shouldn't I guess it is the whore. Yeah, I oh. it uh, honestly personally I don't know I don't really don't know where <clears throat> I stand on it I don't want to see it legalized in the sense that I don't want to see whores like walking the streets bringing down the property value you know like you just don't want to see things like that but at the same time I say why the hell not because I remember when I was in Las Vegas just earlier this year not only could you like these little mexican dudes were handing out flyers for prostitutes and like they would come right to the hotel room if you wanted that but they were also walking the streets and just as uh hawk mentioned you know you see those programs on hbo and they have like um the moonlight bunny ranch and people can just go there so it's like i don't know it's like it, it seems like it it's legal on a level where anything goes and i don't know that i would want that to be the way in which it happens i would prefer it be you know internet commerce uh phone you know you call and they come over stuff like that but in the streets you know the 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 allowed to walk down the streets or bend over in front of a car or just give a guy a blowjob down an alleyway that kind of stuff is completely unacceptable so that episode yeah Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But you, but you know what? So why that happens? Because you got to figure. Okay, 
for everything that has to be, you know, for, for every business that has to be the quote unquote 99 cent store. So, you know, if you have that where you have a physical location and you're testing the women and they're clean and they're doing this, I'm sure that the a night with that with that girl's gonna cost more money than the dirty bitch, you know, you pick up on Hunts Point. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you seem to know the street names as well. Come on, who doesn't? All right. come, come on, who in, who in New York doesn't know that Hunts Point used to be? Yeah, used to be that let's use that lightly. Too, man. <laughs> yeah, let's use that lightly. <laughs> yeah, let's use that likely, uh, you know, excuse here. Who doesn't know? <laughs> that's that's what works for you. Hey, I'm, I'm he said with that's it. what works for me. Nah, zero told me about that spot. <laughs> Find yourself in the Bronx often. <laughs> nah, nah, zero told me about that spot, son. <laughs> Uh, man, but even if they were to, you know, allow people to do it over phone or internet or whatever, there's still going to be the guy that's cheating on his wife or whatever, has no place to go, probably doesn't want to spend the extra money on a hotel, going to be like, all right, you know what, I'm going to drive down this dark alley and we're going to make this happen. So it's like things like that. But I'm saying, I guess it's going to happen regardless, regardless of if it's legalized or not, it's still going to occur. So might as well go ahead and, like you said, provide a uh, safe haven. Maybe these prostitutes won't be murdered <laughs> because, exactly. yeah. you know, yeah. things like that won't be going on. Um, maybe the, the whole uh, drug side of prostitution could be not eliminated, but it would probably be reduced on a grander scale because now they don't have to rely on pimps and stuff like that because they can just go into the business theirself and they won't have to worry about... You know, how are they going to get clients, things like that, because I guess the pimp is usually, you know, finding people. But, um, yeah, I I don't know where I stand on it, but I think I would be more towards the direction of just go ahead and legalize it. But then again, once that happens, it's like, is that going to now just open the floodgates for prostitution and, and Johns? And is that going to now make the 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 spread of diseases become a bit more prevalent than it currently is you know i mean stds are already out of control now you have people that are legally doing this prostitution stuff and even if they are subjected to testing it doesn't immediately reveal what the results are so a whore could be out there spreading a disease unknowingly and then this individual that was a john goes on and passes it on to someone else so you know it could open floodgates to that kind of stuff. And I don't know that I necessarily want to allow that to happen on a grander scale because as it is now, because it is illegal, it's a lot less. It doesn't happen as, as often as it could if it were to become legal, kind of like smoking weed. If weed became legalized, you're going to see more people doing it because there's going to be the all that fear is gone. No one's going to have to worry about, oh, you know, if they do a random drug test, you know, None of that is going to have to be a concern to anyone. So you're definitely going to see more people smoking it. And because of that, it's just going to be open to more people than it was originally open to. So well, I really I, don't know. I, I agree with a lot of the points you made. Um, only, only thing I think with the prostitution is that since the community, like people who, one, partake in prostitution – and the people as well that service prostitution. It's such an underground, like, it's an underground world within itself. Yeah. You know? And I feel like it was still, even if it became legalized, it be it would be kind of weird to all of a sudden be sitting home watching Food Channel and, like, a prostitution commercial popped up, you know? <laughs> so, like, I mean, it would be a little weird. You know, come down to John's, sh- like, Chicken Shack and in the back get your, you know, your giblets. <laughs> Guzzle, like, you know, like, <laughs> oh, man, I think I'd be buying chicken on a regular <laughs> yeah, basis. I like, I like that terminology. <laughs> to make prostitution legalized, it would be just too much effort on behalf of the government. In terms of, you also have to factor in the age group. Not all prostitutes are of certain age. A lot of them are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, and you know what? Those 16, 17 year olds are making more than both of us put together. Because of the amount of money that they're getting, if they're in the right establishment. True, but I they don't that get also, to keep yeah, that like, money. Do another it. issue too, like how dangerous. Like you know, we talk about like the one side of like what it do to our communities and what it does to, you know, like everything else. How how prostitution on the streets, how it affects you know the community. But like we don't really talk about how it affects the the woman or the young girl or whoever. 
has to deal like like you was mentioning earlier ago, like he was mentioning like <laughs> a pet, like that is like some of the most horrible, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of experiences. You know, like I, I was I was sleeping my in my own apartment like maybe a few months back, and I was like sleep like two o'clock in the day, you know, and I just hear all this like ruckus outside, like because I, I like I'm not I'm barely like on the second floor, so I can just see the street. Right. It's like this this tall, lanky, just completely broke looking brother is out there, like, and he has control and have these like these little young girls, like like sixteen, seventeen, maybe nineteen, wow. range, just like. They're like scrapping and fighting at each other, and he's like, "Bitches, get in the car!" And they're just like snapping at his every, you know. I'm just, Damn. I, I'm just like shocked. <laughs> it's like, but, but at the same time, so I'm saying, if we, if you're gonna legalize prostitution, obviously you're not gonna let 16 year olds be prostitutes. Yes, 19 year olds, 21 year olds, it can have a psychological effect on, on them too. But as I said, I don't, I don't know if it was to be legalized. I'm just saying, if it was. I would want it to have that structure. I'm not saying I want it to be legalized. Hmm. Now, but, am I a bad person for being disgusted, <clears throat> but at the same time intrigued by how much control this uh, prostitute had over these, uh, well, this pimp had over these women? Like, he's just like, get in the car, and they're doing it? Like, how does that happen? How does that dude exact that kind of control? Yes, again, I think that... Lots that degradation, man. <laughs> it's probably, like, again, lack of, a lack of uh, self-worth, a lack of... Yeah. A lack of uh, respect for yourself, so they find. I guess they find it from this guy. Maybe they find it from the guys who want them. Maybe at that moment, you know, when you're horny, that chick is the most important thing in the world to you. And maybe at you know, she gets some kind of self worth from knowing that at right now you want nothing other than her. And this guy is facilitating that for her, so they're, they're brainwashed to it. Hmm. Is there any information that I can gather on where I can find these kind of women? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Hunt's point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll be taking a trip to the Bronx after the podcast. <laughs> no, nah, of course I'm not taking a trip to the Bronx. To the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> you get killed before you make it. <laughs> no, no, no disrespect to anybody from the Bronx, but seriously, guys, the Bronx. Well, I actually used to work in the Bronx. It's not that bad. It's uh, it's actually pretty oh, nice in certain okay. areas. Kind of certain areas, yeah. They're, they're trying to, yeah, whatever. That, that Hunts Point is kind of dicey, man. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it is very dicey. There's this, uh, <laughs> there's this uh, gentleman's establishment that I've, uh, you know, attended a couple of times over there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of dicey. Mm. Definitely. But you should check it out, though, you know. Whenever you yeah. get the chance, <laughs> you talking to me? You trying to get, trying to get Hawk in trouble, man? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, my, like my girl is like right here. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking to son. Like, to to me, I went to this gentleman's establishment over there. It was a little dicey. You know, <laughs> make sure you take a trip over there, Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not. I'm talking to son. Twist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I've already made a real good name for myself. <laughs> well, your name is Go Perverta, so we already seriously it's already, it's already downhill after that. <laughs> yeah, Go Perverta, Violent Trails, you know how it goes. Um, so I guess to segue off of the prostitution topic here, another topic that I personally um, kind of threw out there and had interest in is after a relationship, you know, things didn't work out, whether it be good or bad, but... Um, you kind of both went your own ways. Is pursuing a platonic relationship ever a good idea? Or should you know? Should all ties just be severed and both people just go their opposite ways? I think both ties should be severed. You should never see that person, speak of them, hear about them. That that person didn't exist. Why? Because there's too many too many things that come up. Like there's still feelings, even though. Even though you yeah, broke up, whatever, even if you hated each other when you broke up, there's always some part of that relationship mm -hmm. that you still cared about. So there's still feelings there. So now you see her with another dude, you might catch a feeling. She sees you with another chick, you might catch a feeling. Or you might be together when hanging out and everything's going good because you still have feelings. Something pops off that shouldn't have. And now you're getting your feelings into mingled again. No, you need to no. Cut, that, cut that off and keep it moving. Now, are you speaking from experience or do you see things going that way? Because personally, I have, 
and this is another thing I need to ask before I even delve into that other part of things here. Does the same rule apply if it wasn't a relationship? What if you just dated for a few months and no, then anything has to has to go? Because... So you're telling me any female that you had any kind of romantic relationship with, whether it be in a full relationship or just dating, once things don't work out, ties are severed and you go your separate ways. Yeah. This person cannot be a friend of yours nope. ever. Nope. Not if I can help it. I don't. I mean, it, it probably happened, but not if I can help it. But what if you were good friends? No. And you just no. destroyed a friendship. <laughs> no. You just destroyed a friendship. If you were good friends, you... Just like that, huh? Just like that. I mean, I, it's, I, like I, said, I have to... Because like I, I said, to it's, too many, I, it's too many, it's too many yeah, it's, potential issues that will arise to affect your friendship and affect uh-huh. your future relationships with somebody else. And you may not even think... Because you may think, oh, whatever, I broke up with her and I'm fine. And then you see her with some other dude, and she's happy, and you're like, "Yo, that's I used that, that's my spot. What the hell? What is this raggedy nigga doing over there?" All right, okay. And you, all right, you another. That, that it would have hit you like that. And now, does this apply to any personality type? What if you're, you know, able to handle something like that? Anybody, I don't care. Well, I'll see, all right. To that, like, I, can I answer that one? I, I feel yeah. Like, I, I agree with Sun Twisted because I feel like the whole thing, like, if you're gonna start. Basically, once you sever ties, like, I, I don't know, I'm, me personally, like, when I break up with a female, when I, once that relationship is over, I'm usually the one doing the breaking anyway. <laughs> wow. But I'm saying, but, like, once you got to that point, it's like, yo, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing left. That, that's it. Because the next relationship that you start, it's all about the things that you do, how you conduct that relationship, how you build upon that relationship. You mm-hmm. can't, you already bring your baggage to that, that, that new relationship. Whatever shit that last person put you through, where she cheated on you, or you know, what I'm saying you caught in the bed with a midget and a donkey, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> whatever it is that you, 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 God, God built in that old relationship, the friendship is not the same even afterwards. So you can't drag that bitch with you to the next one. Like, hey, this is my partner here that I used to fuck. Like, it's no, another. It's a, damn. Another another point about that. How you, how is that how is that of the new girl gonna feel about the fact that you're still cool with this chick that you were in a relationship with? It's not about you anymore. That you you know like it's that's another that's another thing you got to think about. Who's gonna be cool with that? Like we, we used to I used to fuck this person. We used to you'd be together. Maybe even y'all were talking about marriage and children, and and now you start in a relationship with somebody new, and you still have that person in your life. That new person is not gonna be cool with that. When you want to go hang out with them and all that, they're not gonna be cool with that. So now you're already causing problems in your new relationship. Do you, do you realize? Need- the repercussions of the things you're saying right now. Do you know how many friends I have to eliminate at this point? <laughs> so, I, so, I, man. Yeah, I don't know how many friends you have to eliminate. I, I've been telling you that for how many years? What you? Ah, uh, damn. But, I, mean, I, yo, I, I know what you mean, go. I, I completely understand. But like, yo, you gotta. It's 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 tough. But it's like that's the whole thing about a breakup. A breakup is tough. Nobody wants to go through a breakup. Nobody wants to cut ties because it's hard just emotional just mud that you gotta sludge through you know what i'm saying like you gotta go through you got basically this is the problem with relationships you're in a relationship for an extended period of time you build this friendship you build on this relationship this this romance all these things now this person becomes an integral part of your everyday life the reason right. why when you break up with them it needs to be completely severed so you as an individual can move forward like you can't move forward if you still dragging that person with you and you still got these little things that y'all used to do when y'all was in a relationship and y'all still talk every night or every other third Thursday. Like, you got to let that go because that's how not only do you hear whether you was the breaker or the breakee, but it's also how that other person gets a chance to move on with their life. And it always seems hard. People are like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be okay. See her in six months. Look at her Facebook page in six months. That bitch is doing just fine. Exactly. Let me ask yeah, you a question, yeah. Go. Let me ask you a question. Because you said, because you said, how many friendships you have to end right now, without naming any names. Uh huh. How many of the people that you have separated from still try to come at you on some, let's get something popping afterwards, mm. even if it's not a relationship thing. Mm. You you want me to like give just say yeah, numerical I mean, figures <laughs> at this number, point? Like, you've you've experienced that, yes or no? <clears throat> yes, I have experienced okay, that. And that's what I'm talking about. 
That's mm-hmm. because even though wait, you, even what though, is the percentage? If you can guesstimate, what is the percentage? Because if it's uh, just one experience, that doesn't count for anything. I know for a fact it's the not one experience. <laughs> No. Because Were I, you because, one? No, because he's my <laughs> boy. I've known him for ten years. We talk. <laughs> we talk. Oh man, I... that was the case. The Twisted Perf podcast wouldn't exist, man. Ralph would have cut his ties. Ralph would go about his business. <laughs> I would say probably seventy-five percent. Okay, you see, and that's what I'm talking about. So even though that person knows it's over. They still had some kind of emotional, uh, or whatever it was, even if it was an emotion, even if it was just lust. They have an attachment, and they still keep coming back. So when you say certain things, they may not, they may not, you know, let you know. But I'm sure certain things, certain things you do, kind of upsets them. It's like, Jane, this nigga's talking to that chick, or he's doing this, or you know, that should have been me. Hmm. Interferes. Well, I don't really. It's... To to have it be like that, I would have to make the assumption that you would think they have a, a huge role in my life when it's not like that. You know, like things that I may do, they're not aware of it. So there's no they're oh not, he should huh? Then I mean yeah, but see, but you kind of cut them off anyway. You keep it's like you basically you kept them in the friend zone, but you don't actually hang out with these people like they're your friends anymore. Right, right, but so, you might so well cut them off. but it's kind of huh? like having your cake and eating it too, though, because it's like you're saying to the person, like, yeah, we can't work as relationship. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't see you that way, but I want to still take this piece right here and this piece right here, this friendship. It was mad cool. We like, you know, talk about baseball. I'm gonna take this right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this section. Exactly. But all that other shit, you like, take yeah, that. You're, not, you're, you're garbage in every other area, but this right here. <laughs> You can't have none of this cake, stuff. Man. You can't have none of this stuff in this column. But but these two little things right here, I fuck with you with that sometimes. Right. <laughs> then you gotta try to explain that to your partner, like, because once you lie, I mean, shit is downhill from there. You, you lie. To well, the see, that's the thing. I've never, I've never put myself in a position where I start lying. You know, it's like I I like straight up let people know, like, but these relationships aren't that's like that. Your that your partner is okay with it, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, definitely understand that, but I have yet to encounter outright, um, like a situation where it's like, you know what, she's got to be gone, or this can't happen. I've not yet encountered that. Yeah, because like I said, you are a unique individual, and you're kind of cold, and you don't. Wow. <laughs> so, am... <laughs> these women. Are... Why, why are you not still with them? Huh? Why are you not still with these people that we're talking about? Uh, because I have no emotions. That's hey, why. So, <laughs> he said I have no emotions. So, so you don't. You don't. Well, that's a different story, buddy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a different podcast entirely. <laughs> Dude would actually be probably have more interactions with these people that would elicit that you no, know, that person has to go type of situation. But because you don't really keep them close to you like that. Is why you're not probably not experiencing that. No, mm-hmm. I guess. So you're yeah. saying the lack yeah. of flash is sticking, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, like 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 other uh, a regular dude running the street would probably keep the situation close enough that if he wanted to get a piece again, he probably could get a piece. You don't you don't do that. So right, and that and therein lies my point. Like why why then does it need to be eliminated if I'm not even? No, I'm saying if you. All right, let, let, let's just break it down like this. When I say that, I'm not saying every single person because every there's no way one statement is going to fit every single person on this planet. Exactly. If you're like that, if you can do that and manage it like that, then then by all means do that. But if you're the type of person or they're the type of person where it's going to be that, those type of problems, you need to cut that off and keep it moving. But see, it speaks to something else too, though. But we just, like, we just admitted earlier that when you're getting into a relationship with another person... It, it's no longer just about you, though, and what your right. like your idiosyncrasies and like the small nuances that you have that make you go or that make you t- twist it. You know what I'm saying? Like those things aren't the sole focal point. It's about how that other person that you just started something new with, how they perceive it, right. how they're gonna handle these interactions. Because right. like that's the most important part about that building with the relationship. It's like you you know, you know most people think most people think they the shit anyway. Like oh I'm. Even if they don't like, you know, like I'm, I'm a good person. I'm this. I'm that. 
So it's like you a lot of times it's hard for you to point out what's wrong with themselves. So you say it's okay, but somebody else is like, listen, how am I supposed to trust you? Even though you say you're like that, I'm doing a finger quotation by the way. Uh, <laughs> you're like that. <laughs> finger quote. You know, okay. you know what I'm saying? It's it's what's to make the partner just say, Oh, cool. I know you like that. You you I understand. I trust you, baby. It's all good. No. Chances are the majority of people they don't think that way. It's so it's it's not really about where we're like individual case based. It's about doing what's what seems right for that for your relationship at in general as a whole. Like so as a whole, it makes a lot more sense when you're trying to get close to somebody, you know, when you're trying to build something with someone to let go of those past, you know, just mucky waters. Like get rid of it. Cause you it's not really holding any real, you know, tangible tangible meaningfulness inside your own life right now. So why why even why even take it with you? So <clears throat> let me ask this just to further things. Uh if it were say a situation which you may have been interested in someone or that person or someone else may have been interested in you, but it never went in that direction. You know, it never developed beyond them being interested or you being interested for whatever reason. Are you allowed to keep those people in your life, or do you have to cut them uh, off too? Those people are right because if if it didn't go anywhere, yeah, then... but but even that though, it's varying degrees. I, I don't know. Like, it, I say this: it depends. Because some people have like flirtatious yeah but tendencies just, that go too far. Yeah, but it, that's what I'm saying. It depends on how mature that person is. Like if they right. can if they can accept the fact that they're feeling you and you're not feeling them and keep it as friends and not keep trying to 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 pressure you about it or trying to yeah. trying to sneakily come over to hang out. You know what I mean? Again, with the air quotes, and they really trying to trying to get something popping, you know, while they're hanging out. If if they can handle that, then cool. But if they're not, if they're gonna keep crossing the boundaries, they have to go as well. But um, just to add something onto what Hawk just said about the the you gotta take into consideration the new person, not just them, but you also gotta take into consideration the person that you separated from. Like, can they are they mature enough to allow you to move on with your life with somebody else, and not catch feelings about the fact that it's not them. Right. Because um, cause just because you say, and we all know as men, just because a woman says she's okay with it, <laughs> doesn't mean she's okay. With doesn't it. mean she's okay with it. Um, I, I, I personally couldn't identify, so you know. You can't. I can bring up a story. I can bring up something <laughs> that you told me. Oh. Like that that one chick. I forgot what she was. She was some kind of engineer or something that was like, oh, she can't stand needy dudes and guys always stressing her. Oh. She likes guys who don't care. And then when and then when when she when you showed her what not caring is really about mm. she started coming at you on some on some oh, why you don't call me more and hang out with me she, <laughs> right so what happened what happened she was she was, well i mean i hate the fact that you're making me seem like such a bad individual nah, a bad i didn't show that's her not, i'm so not saying that you're a bad individual what i'm saying is she was on that she was on, caring is about yes yeah oh you showed her because she because she can't because the way you, you describe her to me she came off as that you know dudes always throw themselves at her feet and she can't stand that. And you know, when it's my when I need my space, I need my space. And you need to understand that. And then, and I guess she was sick. She was putting on a show for you because she thought you she was gonna have you like that. And when you were were on that more than she was, or some really, yeah, I really don't give a shit, bitch. Like you could be as All bad right. as you think you are, but you, I walk away from you in a hot second. Don't matter. Then she became the clingy one. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so she is... she didn't know what not caring really meant. All right. All right. So. Damn. It was more along the lines because that just sounds so bad. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was so put more the, along the lines of, awful. like you said, she, <laughs> she really, <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, she really thought that, you know, she was it. Dudes are always throwing her, themselves at her, like you said. Me, I, it wasn't, I, I wasn't showing her that I don't care. All it was is just me being me. I'm a busy person. I don't have the time to be on the phone all the time or but that's what I'm calling saying. you all the you time. You showed her what not stressing a person really is about. Right. You see, the thing is, the fact that you're saying not you that you showed purposely her. I didn't, I didn't come you out. Going, ah, bitch. You said you set out to do that, but you said you're busy. You had this is what you do. wanted. I don't stress people. This is, my, you know, this is how I roll. I don't stress people. She thought she really didn't stress people, and she was playing games. She was, in the, she was playing with the children in the sandbox. She was using the adult section, making it happen. She didn't really understand so what it really meant people. like what it really meant right. to want attention from somebody and not be able to get it when you want it. Right, I guess. Yeah, I guess well, that's, that's more. That's interesting, too, because, I mean, that, that goes back to another thing. Like, what I was saying earlier, like, women typically tend to say one thing 
but completely means something else though. So I mean, like, even though she, I mean, I don't, I don't know your situation. I mean, I, this is my first time even talking to you, though. But you know, <laughs> from what it sounds like, I mean, even though she kind of said to you like she's not really with dudes stressing her or whatever like that. A lot of times when women say stuff like that, a lot of times that's just an inclination or a hint to do because we're supposed to like you know be telepathic and all for you to try harder or to do more of that. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think personally that's her way of saying I'm the shit. All these niggas want me, so you better be you better be on your shit because because dudes are gonna be coming at me. That, and that's, that's what, how I took. That's it. what she was saying. And when he was like, "Wait, whatever, bitch, do you?" She was like, "Oh shit, what this? What is this guy going on? <laughs> Everybody else is is feeding for me. This nigga don't even care. Like, what what is he? And I think that's what happened to her. She she's not used to that. Like, you, but that makes but that also sad. makes him typically in those situations where that also makes goat more like attractive. Exactly. Too. Exactly. He, right. So it's like. So now she's wanting more of him and she wants to see more of him, you know what I'm saying? But he's like, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Man, I sound like a complete douchebag. <laughs> I'm not even saying it because I'm, I'm, I'm like that too. I don't get like you, like whatever. Like you, you're not, the, you just, you're a woman. Like, you, you know how many of you exist on this planet? I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be stressing over you. That's ridiculous. All right. But you see, that's not what goes through my head. Ever. I'm, I'm, it never goes through my head like okay. that's, that's where that's what goes through my head. That's where I get. That's where I, that's where I come from. I don't. That's I don't, where you are. There's, okay. there's no point in stressing another human being. There's, there's eight billion of us on this planet, mm. especially yeah. in New York City. Like, <laughs> honestly, I wish I could stress an individual. I wish I could show them how much they they are. You know how much I am interested in that person. It's just it's just not in my genetic code. I can't you don't. You don't constantly. <laughs> you don't. Well, what? No, you don't. You don't. No, you don't. You don't want that, buddy. Stay cool. Well, a little bit more than usual, you know, because like me, I'm like on average, I'm good for a phone call every three days. You know, that's good enough for me. Like, I don't need much. I don't need much attention, you know. Um, and I didn't grow up having a lot of attention just based it on me. So I. You know, I, I kind of respect people's boundaries, especially when someone says that they work, they go to school, or they have these other things that they deal with. It's like, I kind of feel like, you know what, I can respect that because I kind of try to keep myself busy as well. So I don't want to be the individual that calls and you're out with your friends. It's like, oh, here it goes. This dude is calling me like, you tell me you're going out, you go out, you have fun. I will not call you, period. When you get home, you give me a call and we can talk. Like, that's just my mentality. I just respect people's space and... I, I prefer that they do the same for me. And it's never it's never like in my head that, oh, you know, there's a million other women out there. I'm not going to waste my time paying attention to you. It's just, it's just not in me to do that. You know what I mean? I just, I like space and I like to give people their space. Even within the confines of a relationship, I just can't do that. So I guess, you know, I don't really know what happened to her. She got pissed well, see, off and everything, but, you know. I mean, that's interesting too because, like, the, the beginning of a relationship is like the most interesting thing that happens, I think, in a relationship. Besides, like, you know, the milestones, like, you know, these like anniversaries and marriage and kids and all things like, you know. <laughs> Yo, you but, need no, to get a trick of water there. Getting a relationship is like the most important because that is the, the, the pinnacle of yeah. when the guy is the most interested usually in her right. and when she is not the most interested in him. So, like, huh. the further a relationship goes on, like, the guy becomes not less interested, but just less, interested. less likely Stop to... Bullshitting. Less interested. Continue. Yo, that no, no, is, it's, not, that no, is... it's not less interested. No, no. It's less... It's, look, it's, it's less likely to perform the duties of a dude that's <laughs> interested. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, when, you, when I was, like, so super interested, I used to do super interesting things. But as I'm maturing in the relationship, it's like let's, let, let's I become let's less be interested. For real. Let's be for real. <laughs> hey, let's no, be, I become let's less real. It's not even about less interested. You were, you were never that interested to begin with. You were putting on a show <laughs> because you were courting somebody. Okay. Wait, 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 hold on. You were but, putting on a show. <laughs> you were, no, but that's you, what you're trying to do anyway. Like each you, party puts on a show. We don't. You go on a date with somebody. You're not meeting that real person. Exactly. You're, you're meeting that, that fucking they're, 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 they're standing, they're, they're fucking acting buddy. Like you're meeting the best possible representation usually of who that is. So that's why like if a dick doesn't go well, 
you have no reason to talk to that person ever again because if they can't give you that best interpretation, yo. Bye-bye. Job interview. Everybody's gonna, yeah, I'm a hard worker. I mean, they're not gonna tell you they're the bastard who's who's on YouTube when they're supposed to be typing up reports and they in the in the in the men's room jerking off when they're supposed to be. <laughs> you know, they're gonna tell you that, that bullshit. They're gonna tell you that they're the best employee you've ever seen in your life. Um, is it true? Twisted. Shit. Every girl I've ever dated, I've pointed out all my bad features, like don't almost you. right up front. I don't believe you. Huh? <laughs> Don't you don't believe me. Oh, I said they don't believe you. Oh, they because I tell everybody like you know well, I, I, I tell to them like huh? a lot of times like women see that like there's there's two types of like what they call game or whatever. It's like you can pretend to be Mister Wonderful or whatever, or you can like here I'm gonna be just this raw doll like this is me. This is all I am. My ugly self. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so sexy. He just was so honest. We know guys have realized that there are two routes that you can take. You know, so it's like a lot of times, like you go going to a woman saying like, "Yo, this is the ugly side of me. This is who I am. I don't give a damn about if you go out with your girls at three a.m. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just don't catch no STD. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah. no, no. They, they, they don't. They, it's just like, oh, well, he's just being so sweet and honest with me. Like they just take it as more game. They don't take it as like. This motherfucker is for real. Well, I've heard many different. Uh, it's been it's been explained to me different ways. Some women will say something like, um, "You know, why do you keep pointing out all your bad features? Um, let me get to know the good side of you." And <laughs> I've had. I mean, there was one situation I remember. Like, I remember telling this girl, like, "You know, I really don't care. You know, while we're dating, it's just dating. If you want to see other people, go right ahead. It makes no difference to me." And then there was one time we went to a club, and I think I told you this story, Sun Twisted. Her and I were dancing, and then this girl asked me to dance. So I started dancing with the girl, and she started dancing with another guy. I had no problem with it. When she was done dancing with the guy, she was standing there with her arms folded. And I went to her, I'm like, what's the problem? She was like, oh, you started dancing with another girl, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you were <clears> dancing <throat> with a guy. What's, what's the big deal? And then she's like, yeah, but that shows you don't care. And I'm like... But you were dancing with a dude. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. And it's, I just saw it as dancing. It's not like. <laughs> it's not like the. See, dude. but that's the problem. That's the problem. Because uh, it's like what we were talking about the other day. Like, trying to understand the way a woman's mind works. And like I was saying, everything they do is tied to an emotion. We're going to go to that. It, it's, 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 it's tied to an emotion. So even when you told that chick, oh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm this, uh, this, these are my flaws. If she was already feeling you. None of that shit mattered. She already had an emotional attachment to you. So all that not shit that talking, quickly, man. That quickly. That quickly. Yeah. That quickly. Emotional. Yeah. Some. So whatever it was, whether it was she saw a possibility for something in the future, whatever, whatever it was, there was some emotion attached to that. That what you just said cannot trump the emotion. Hmm. So you, whatever, I don't believe, or it could have, you know, she, either she doesn't believe you, or it could be, yeah, whatever, you talking that shit now, but I'm going to change you. You know, coming at it like that. She wasn't trying to hear that bullshit. She decided that she wanted to mess with you, and yeah, who she going to mess with? It doesn't matter what bullshit came out your mouth. Unless, maybe, unless you unless punched on her face right <laughs> off the bat. Damn. They, uh, that probably would have been the only thing that made her like, yeah. This I don't know, some of them like it rough, though, so that might have just turned up on more. Possibly, this. too. You might so, just skip. You might just skip all the foreplay and went straight back to her place. So exactly. <laughs> with a punch to the face, <laughs> burn me with a cigarette. You know. I like to get choked out and, and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it damn sure is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so. But what were you talking about? That I'm, am I gonna break down the analogy? Were you, were you... I don't know. You had this whole thing about, um, and and it's gonna be so disjointed because I can't remember word for word exactly what you were saying. But um, uh, man, I can't I can't even re- I can't repeat what you said because I don't remember. It was just basically <laughs> you said something's wrong with women. Oh, uh, the, imbalance. Yeah, there you go. The chemical <laughs> imbalance. That's what you said. <laughs> A chemical imbalance. That's how I feel. It's like it's, there's there's a level of rationality that does does not come into play. 
now is it because everything is emotionally driven? Yes, that's what I think. Because oh, okay. it's emotionally driven. So it's like like I said, if even if this doesn't make sense, if this is what emotionally what feels good, everything else logically can say that's a bad move. The emotion is more important than the logic. Now, what about yourself? Do you make logical only decisions or do you make logical I, and I, emotional I make decisions? Both, but I'll take both into consideration. Gotcha. Before making a decision. If the if the logic says this is bad and the emotion says I want to do it, I probably won't do it. Depending on what it is, though. Yeah, depending on what it is. Or if, I mean, or if I mean, instinct if instinct says do it, then I follow instinct over everything else. But if if it's just pure emotion, like like I want this, like let's say I want this thing that costs five hundred dollars, but logic is saying, uh, nah, you got this, this, and that that needs to be taken care of. You can't really do that. Then I won't do it. Mm-hmm. But if there's nothing, if, if I just have the, the 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 feeling to go get it, and there's no negative reason other than I won't have that five hundred dollars to do it, yeah, I'll go do it. Why not? Nah, I got you. Well, I'm see, so anal. Like, go ahead. No, see, I, I feel like with with terms of women, it's 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 funny because I feel like. That's something that's probably more prevalent when it comes to especially like relationships and and things having to do with like, you know, just the opposite sex and love, especially, you know, but I feel like women are very, very, you know, like really great thinkers when it comes to like oh, sometimes some some women have no idea what to do with money. But like when it comes to like sometimes <laughs> the logical sense of, you know, saying I need to buy this, you know, I really want this, but uh, I probably want to pay my light bill first. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. like. It's it's that that also breaks down to the different like individuals, but I feel like the the real grand scheme of things where women kind of get muddled and it's just like really just drive men insane is that a lot of times you feel like there's no logic involved in the process of the relationship or like right. the day to day of the relationship, right. of what you're expected the expectations of you and the expectations of what's supposed to happen in the relationship, right. Definitely. And even back to what you just said, I still think that's still an emotional thing. Like because the emotion I'm thinking is security. Like you want to be, you want to be in a stable environment. So running out and buying that is not gonna is not is gonna interfere with your stable environment. So I still don't think that's a logical thing. That paying the lights is more important than buying them shoes. It's about I can't I can't be sitting here in the dark. That I'm gonna be asked out. Well, that is logic. That's, that's logical, though. But I, that's, I think that's, that's more, more logical. Logic, but I think that's more emotional, an emotional. Well, okay, thing so can we say that logic. there are something, there are decisions that we make that can be logical, but they can also be, you know, emotional, emotionally driven. I mean, yeah, it makes sense logically, yes, but it's, <laughs> it is driven by emotion. But I think it's more the emotional side of it than the logic. Mm. And then there's people like myself who don't make any emotional decisions, only logical decisions. If I want to make an emotional decision, I'll visit a liquor store. Then I'll just start making emotional decisions oh, yeah. all so over when the place. Drunk, it's just... Man, there's no logic. It's like whatever. If I feel it, I do it. That's pretty much how it happens. Like otherwise, but that's not I'm... to say you don't have those feelings. You just don't act on them. Yeah. Yeah, I just there's no emotional drive for anything, so it's just like if I if I need to make an emotional decision, I'll just drink and then I'll be able to so, do it. So so the dude at at GameStop is safe until you come through with some liquor in your system. Oh hell yeah, it's over for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That's probably the only way I'll ever get into a, a fight again. Like I would have to literally drink, or if someone just like punched me right in the face, then it's like you know what. Logically speaking, if I don't punch this guy in his face and, you know, kick his nuts and he's probably going to try to attack me again. So preservation of life says I have to kick his ass. So, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> but just me getting mad and just started wiling out now nah, probably won't happen. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. So I guess uh, moving on <laughs> from that, um, another thing I kind of wanted to, to touch upon is... Um, you know, we're in the middle of a uh, any what is this? A financial depression, if you want to say. I don't know that it really is as yes, bad as is. that. It's Maybe it is that it's bad. Disgusted. Yeah, I guess it is a financial depression. It's kind of worldwide at this point. So, you know, let's just say you. I was act. This this actually came based on a um, an actual story that I was looking at on TV where this guy he he really didn't have any <laughs> money, and he met this girl. And he wanted to move in with her, but she lived in a completely different state from him. So what he decided to do was save up enough money just so that he could move out there. 
He moved out there. He couldn't find any work. She doesn't have a job because she's still a student. So they both have no money. Eventually, he comes to the point where it's like he he's doing photography <clears throat> on the side, trying to make money. And I guess he came across an ad for a bikini contest. And the winner was going to win a couple of thousand dollars. So he actually talks his girl into it. She enters and she loses. But I was thinking to myself, like, wow, that's an extreme right there. Like, this is what he had to do. Like, in a way, he almost had to pimp his girl out to make some money. And I was saying, if, like, if you're in that position, would you ever go to those kinds of extremes? And at what point is it enough? Like, bikini contests, prostitution. Wait, you, and you indeed, know what? That's, that's actually really funny because my, my, my girlfriend, you know, can attest to this. Because, you know, we have, we have these conversations. We... we we cohabitate, you know, right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when you when you cohabitate, you know, it's, it's a lot of financial struggles right. in this current climate. Right. So, you know, a lot of times, like, like my, my partner, she comes up and she'll say things to me like, you know, I don't know if you guys ever saw that show, like the, the, the show, um, you know, like, like something like Fear Factor or whatever like that, like, you know, right. you, she come like random, like I could be like, Shaving? Well, I'm never shaving. Let me, let me just stop. Yeah, never. I, you know, I, <laughs> but uh, I, can, I can, you know, like I can be in the bathroom. I can be eating a bowl of cereal. I mean, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Playing a game. You know, whatever it is. Like, and she just comes to me like, if someone gave you two million dollars, would you go and eat donkey balls? Like, it's just like, <laughs> it's like mad random. <laughs> and it's like, part of me seriously analyzes it and thinks about it. Right. And the other part of me is like, why are you asking me this right now? Like, <laughs> but so, it's, it's it's interesting because like, how far would you go? Like, you know, you ask some money to the mix. Like, you ask me like, oh yeah, would you eat some donkey balls just like straight up? Nah, man, nah, I'm, I'm not fucking. With you. But you're like, well, I give you a million dollars. Like, well, have you? Are you curing them first? Are you putting them in a smokehouse? What is what's happening to these donkey balls before <laughs> they reach my plate? All right. So before we move into the real meat of the subject here. <laughs> If you were to be offered some donkey balls for, you know, a couple of mil, they don't cook the donkey balls. They just, like, straight off the donkey, they just cut oh, it. Oh. So, you know, you've got fresh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you've got fresh semen well, in just, there and everything. Oh, no. no, no. I'm just, well, I'm Would you? Well, can, I, can, I, can I pick a seasoning? Can I make a sauce? No, no, no seasoning. You just got to go right in bare teeth. No just... <laughs> There's enough sauce in that donkey's balls already, so you should be good. <laughs> Well, nah, I don't see. I, honestly, I don't need to say nah. I wouldn't do that. Yes. <laughs> you probably would say yeah, bring it on. But would you actually be able to go through with it? With the, yeah. I'd be able to bite it. I don't know that I'd be able yeah, to, to, be able to it down. Yeah, to be able to even swallow it, like to chew it. Nah, see, yeah. To my honor, you just do it. You just you gotta you just gotta think you're eating some old chitlins or something. No, no, I'm never eating chitlins. <laughs> <I'm> never... <laughs> No, because when you go you go bite into a donkey's balls and you just feel a secretion ex- oh. exude into your oh. mouth. <laughs> oh. How do you how do you how do you you know reconcile that with yourself? <laughs> you just swallowed a couple of ass babies. You know, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> how do, how, like a million dollars be damn, yo. How do you sleep at night? I'll sleep pretty well. If I could keep I, it I down, I'll sleep, sleep real well. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, my sleep is fun. I mean, it's, it's, but that, I mean, it's sad that in America, like, they even have like TV shows that put what's what's that other show where like, they they it's like American Gladiator mixed with like it's like MXL or whatever MXC, but it's like an American version of it. We have these American people running around through these like courses. You talking, maybe... about, you talking about Splashdown or something like that? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that shit is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but even like my girlfriend talks to me about like signing me up for that, and I'm like. Damn. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Damn, you're right. Do you see what they do to those people? Are we really that? Is, is times really that hard? You want to see me get pummeled by a giant ball? Like, you know what? <laughs> times is that hard. <laughs> it really is. At the end of the day, times is that hard. I was reading an article online, and there was about a 55 year old man. He just got fired from working 30 years at a supermarket, has no health insurance, has no money in the bank. And so. He puts on a suit, he writes a little letter, and he gives it to the bank teller. When the bank teller opens it up, it says, I want, I'm going to rob you at gunpoint for $1. I'll be waiting in the corner for the police. The police come, and they're like, I'm not going to arrest you for a dollar. He says, if you don't arrest me, I'm going to come back with a gun, and I'm going to ask for $2,000. He 
He's now yeah. in jail getting all the meals he needs. Nice. Warm. He's nice. getting, I mean, and health care. And right? he's getting to work out, too. That's serious. He's getting to work out. He's getting worked out. He's getting, work out. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting stretched out like a hamstring right now. <laughs> hey, whatever he's it getting, is, he's, he's getting, getting research too. He's getting one of those Nicole anal thrashings that you saw. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole anal thrashing. That may be the cherry on top of the so no, Rough, no, no lube, no nothing, just <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is a Nicole anal? I remember what she was talking about. You know, she was talking on Twitter about you know, how oh, she was put on the uh, dude after the thrash. That's, oh. that's so funny. Why thrash? Like oh. of all the words you could have used for that. <laughs> you could describe oh. that situation. Well, her ass oh. probably hurt the next day. <laughs> but a thrashing? Like, <laughs> yo, if you're a man and you accept an anal thrashing from anybody. They, they, yo, you you gotta go, man. Like I said, <laughs> if I had a friend that ever told me that he was the recipient of an anal thrashing, I'm slapping the fire out of him. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you're slapping the fire that. out. You're slapping the prolapse back in. Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just not cool at all, man. But I mean, I guess you know times are that hard. But considering the fact that it is that hard. At what point does it stop? You know, like you know, would you yeah, would you I go out there and turn a couple of tricks? You know, a couple of hundred dollars a night, sun twisted. You know, would I do it? Depends I, on the person. See, not, okay, would I do it? Uh, maybe. Would I be okay? With my girl doing it? Hell no. Oh, you would do it. <laughs> so you would do it. It, it depends. It depends what we're talking about. Son. Damn, you go out there and give a couple of hair jobs and such. <laughs> get back. You go out there and give a couple of hand jobs. You know, man, receive some money on the side. Nah, see, it, it, that's what I said. Depends what you're talking about. We talk about <laughs> we talk about <laughs> men. <laughs> we talk about that bullshit. We that bullshit with, from before. With men, how you got to do men? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same question I asked you. If you destitute, would you would you would you whore out? No, I already said I wouldn't do that. Well, even so, we have limits, man. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. If it was, but when you're, when you're talking about the indecent proposal, would you be okay, you know, pimping out your girl for yeah. you to make money? Hell no. Because not not only just the idea of, you know, that's fucked up. Number one, for you to even put your girl in that situation. But then, like, I can't touch you after that. So that's the end of our relationship. So we, if it's if it gets to that point, we might as well just break up and go our separate ways. Mm, but <laughs> I'm but, sorry, uh, I pimped you. I'm sorry, baby. I pimped you out. I thought I was okay with it. We needed the extra ends, but uh, yeah, I can't touch you after just, that. You're just a slut bucket to me now. <laughs> <laughs> Touching you after, or but Damn. then you're saying you would do it. You go out there and you turn a couple of tricks. Oh, nah, 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 no, no, nah, no, that's what I'm saying. If she if she says she ain't cool with it, not, nah, then I'm not doing that either. Uh, wow. Yeah, I guess. But the, the dude, you know, but but I'm saying like it's something like the bikini contest. Is that? Good enough is that too? Contest, uh, you put her out there, you know, walk the runway, you know. I could deal with it. I wouldn't put her out there. I could deal with that though. But the, the other shit, new. No, no, no sexual favors. Nothing. But, all right. So what if it's just you know this guy his uh oh. his his whole thing is just a night on a date with her. No oh. physical. No nope. nothing. A couple of hundred <laughs> thousand dollars. Oh. It's just a date. He's not kissing her. He's not touching oh, her. No date. Nah. You know what? I, if if I can follow and see what the hell's going on, nah, so, you can't follow. Nah, then hell, <laughs> I can't. I don't trust that. Watch. No, but he said there's nothing that's going Boy, on. I'm yeah. just following mm-hmm. to make sure Bird. that your man is not trying to do nothing. You know, trying to get no sneaky, sneaky under the table, son. I'm, yeah, see, well, 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 well. You know, if your girl knew that the rules was not to let him get so sneaky, sneaky, and she let him, that pulls. That's what I'm saying. Time. I gotta be there to crack heads, man. Like, <laughs> now why would that's you be like? <laughs> Why would you crack his head? If because if he because we had a contract, and your man just violated the contract. So I now I must violate his face. All right, so so he violates the contract, but she's receptive. Oh, no, they're of both. His ca- son, I said heads. They're both catching. <laughs> oh, you're gonna crack her head. They're gonna crack her head too in, in broad daylight. <laughs> One of everyone. <laughs> They are both now, now, let me ask you this. You're already in a position where financially things aren't looking good. She's out there, you know. So what, I got to, what do I got to lose then, man? Why not just walk away? What, exactly. I got to lose? <laughs> what do I got to lose, son? Why not just walk away? Son, you have nothing to lose. Sometimes... That is an emotional thought, right? That is not it logical, son. It is. is what Goat is trying to tell it's you. It's the disrespect, though. <laughs> the disrespect. <laughs> no matter how you slice it, once you start cracking heads, you have no, you have thrown out any sort of logic out the window. 
Of right. course. Of course, but it's the disrespect. <laughs> it's the disrespect. It's disrespect. Okay. So for the disrespect, now you're in prison, you, you're destitute, you have no money. I mean, you might as well just walk away. And, and what do I still have? I have the, now, now I have... At least you're not in prison. Freedom. Getting stretched Fuck out. Fuck that. You're not getting the thrashing as you... Oh, oh my God. This is... <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting a thrashing. Yeah, at it's least that is happening. <laughs> so you would just let it go down, take the money, and then... And then... <laughs> oh yeah, that would be perfect. Like for instance, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be perfect. Like you know what? Yeah, he has that. no feelings, no emotions. Like, that, <laughs> that actually is the perfect setting. Like, ah, oh, damn, she went ahead and messed around. Well, you know, you act like nothing went down. You get your cut, and then you're like, I'm out of here. Like I was reading this story about a tattoo artist, and you probably saw it because it was on that media take outside where the the girl cheated on her her boyfriend. He was a tattoo artist, and she wanted him to give her some tattoo like some tribal art on her back and everything so before the tattoo he has some drinks with her they laugh and everything because of the drinks she passes out and the dude tattoos a large like fecal dump on her back with flies around it and now she's trying to sue him like that's the ultimate revenge you don't start making emotional decision and cracking yeah, but, but originally the emotions is going to jump out there maybe maybe logic will catch me before i get in there and start beating people but but the first, the first reaction would be, yo, those motherfuckers gotta die. Yeah, just like that. Just like I, that. My first reaction would just be to walk away. I don't know why. Walking away is just so because easy. you're cold. We just established that. Why does it have to be cold? Because why that's what it's like. You're telling, you're telling me if you, if this was your wife, you've been, you've been married for five. No, that's my wife. That's that? different. I'm coming back with a dual barrel shotgun. Oh, there we go. Oh. Man. And then we, that's what I'm talking about. But that's my wife. Yeah, I'm, not, son, I'm not talking about some... That's what I want you at right there. I'm not talking about some <laughs> chick that you was dating for a couple of months and she did that. Whatever. Cut the, that, that one bitch could go. Not only... not only, And you talk about my cut. I'm taking the whole proceed and I'm leaving. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you that's get not... nothing. So now you're going to rob her. <laughs> I'm not going to rob her. That check is going to be made out to me. She went on the date, but you're robbing her. She, son, the check is being made out to me, son. So no, mm. you didn't do nothing. Didn't I don't care. <laughs> what the hell is that? So in effect, that's gonna be that's gonna, you that's gonna have to be you in the arrangements in the beginning before we before this day even goes down. Hmm. Oh my. Okay, I hear you. Well, that was just pretty much what I I wanted to know, and uh, that that ends my my topics there. I don't know if you had anything additional that you wanted to throw in. Yeah, you had the um the topic about the about the you know people coming up to you with the you know your your articulate and. You know, oh. as a black man, like you're not allowed to to speak well. You're supposed to be some some jabber jawed buffoon. And, and as <laughs> yes, soon as Miss Daisy, <laughs> right? And as soon so as soon as you can, you know, string a proper sentence sentence together in in proper English, all of a sudden it's some great feat that you accomplished that needs to be pointed out. Like, right? Yeah. Uh, um... You said that happens. You said that's the story of your life. So. Well, you know, you know, it's it's kind of funny because I haven't always spoken like this. I actually I'm from Trinidad, so I actually have a an accent. But I came here, for, I don't know, 15, 17 years ago, when I was still a little kid, basically, and um, I had an accent, and of course, it was obvious that I spoke somewhat broken English or whatever the case is, but. I guess what happened is because I was from Trinidad and I didn't speak like everyone else, I just kind of stuck to myself. I would speak less to people because I didn't want anyone to hear my accent because then it was always people making – like they would just go out of their way to to make mention about how I spoke. So I just didn't speak to many people. And I started to just read. Like when I was on lunch, I'd read – when I was home, I'd read. Like that's all I'd re- do. I had literally at any given time five subscriptions to various magazines, and I was reading books from the, the the school that they had their book club. I'd read comic books, and that's all I'd really surround myself with, other than video games. So over time, my my vocabulary just started to really build itself. Like I mean, it got to the point where <clears throat> right before I met Sun Twisted, like. When I would speak to people, they would always ask me what because I had like this vocabulary that was just it was just developed. And I don't know if it was because of the reading, but the the way that sentences were structured, the way that 
paragraphs were structured. I kind of just started speaking like that. I picked up this monotone way of speaking, and it just kind of stuck with me. Since then, I've kind of uh, dropped off all the big words a bit, but I guess the way of speaking still stuck with me. And yeah, like anytime I speak to people, it's one of the first things they mention. I've, I've had girls like their friends would be on the phone with us and they'll ask if I'm white and all kinds of stuff. Like people will say, I don't sound like I look. Be There was actually a guy that took the wow. way that I sound. I don't sound like I look. Yeah, that's uh, what I've heard before. I would have took offense to that. Like, what do I look like, a mongrel? Like, <laughs> I, I don't... I, no, because you don't expect, at least based on what this one guy said to me, he didn't... He, like, he thought that he was going to... Um, like it was basically a deal that went bad, and he thought he was gonna show up. And when he well, actually you saw, that, you talk about that that uh that Craigslist bastard. Well, this was another. Well, th- that there was that Craigslist dude, but there was another situation too. But yeah, the, specifically this is the Craigslist one. I don't know if I ever told you about this, but I was selling um, a camera, and when the dude showed up, because I spoke to him on the phone, when he showed up, he was like, "Wow, you don't sound like you look." He was like, "You sounded like a teddy bear on the phone." But in you know in reality I'm a six foot two, two hundred and thirty pound dude. So him and his boy are sitting in the car, and I guess they thought they were gonna pull something. But when he saw me, for some reason his whole mentality changed, and they gave the money. I gave them the camera. It was all good. But yeah, I've I've heard that all the time. Like that's just it's not it's something I pretty much have adapted to at this point. So. I don't know what people expect black people to sound like. I'm not from the United States, so I really didn't grow up adapting the way that... Because I live in an all-black neighborhood. You know, the N-word is all that I hear. F-bombs all day. Mother F of this. Like, and I pretty much, like, every once in a while it might slip out, but I don't feel comfortable using profanity. It just... I don't feel comfortable doing it. When I, when I use profanity, I'm fully aware of the fact that I just used it. And I don't know. I feel like less of a person for some reason Mm, but that's how and the the n-word i grew up hearing that like even my father would just nigga this nigga that all day but i don't know it just i I don't see what i have to gain out of just just dropping the n-bomb or or f-words like it's just not a part of my normal speech pattern Mm, that's crazy i don't know what what about you i don't i i don't get that like that I i don't know i don't feel like i speak to that degree that people would think that I'm a like, quote unquote white or whatever. I think I'm like an in between. Like I could speak proper English, I speak slang, whatever. So I don't really get that. Oh, you, you know. I mean, I get people tell me, you know, I'm, you know, I've heard people say, oh, you, you're intelligent, but I haven't. I don't get that. Oh, you speak so well, type of type of response from people. So yeah, I've gotten that. As a matter <laughs> of fact, I remember one time I was on the phone and this lady. When you were still working at the company that I work at, Sun Twisted, mm-hmm. there was a lady that got on the phone and she's like, "Yeah, every time I call up there, you know, nobody helps me and blah blah blah." And I'm like, "You know, I'll do my best to help you." And in the back, like while I was doing what I was doing to help her out, in the back, I heard her saying to her husband, "Like, yeah, I think this guy's gonna help us out. I can't really tell, but he kind of sounds like he might be black." I'm like, "Oh boy." <laughs> <laughs> So, I, mean, I, I hear it all the time. It's, it's, it's problematic. I mean, it's something that, since I, since I can remember, since I was, like, in high school, like, I feel like I've gotten this just onslaught of people who, when they, if they talk to me on the phone first, or if they, uh, if we have some interaction, that even in person, it's like, wow, you, you know, you, I didn't expect you, you just, you talk so white. <laughs> like I even, I, I think I even um, it is like in in, in the times I've got into like raging almost fist fights with people because I want them to explain to me what is talking white, what does that entail? Because if it entails just speaking proper English and constructing grammatical sentences, then you, my sir, are an ignorant idiot. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's that's the problem. It's like I even had a, a supervisor when I was like nineteen years old. They used to work at a program that I used to help run. And this guy was like, he, he was a black guy. He was a black guy, intelligent guy, you know, but he was one of those, like, other side of the track type dudes, you know, like, <laughs> you know Uncle, what I'm Uncle Tom? You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Drives a Beamer, you know, he grew up in a great posh neighborhood, went to all the best private schools, went to Ivy League's colleges. So, like, he's always been around people of color, but certain people of color, 
people right. who, you know, usually talk and have the similar thought process. So, like, me and this guy used to always just get into arguments because I really wasn't feeling the way that they had just hired him. I didn't feel the direction that he was taking the program in. And right. so we would get into these these really moral conversations, and, like, the dude would just stop mid-sentence. Like, I'd be talking, he'd cut you off and be like, wow, you, you just, you speak so great, man. You, you speak, you're so intelligent, so articulate. I, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. And it's like, are you for real right now? Like, I, I am, like, trying to explain to you why this this program is whatever it means to me. And you, you talk about, like, how much of a white guy I sound like. Are you, is that, <laughs> is that really where we are right now? And, and, yeah. And worse, it's coming from a black guy. Like, it's coming all, from a black guy. So all black. people, he should, he should understand, because he's black and he speaks, I assume he speaks proper Probably. English and all that, too. So right. why is he, why is he so surprised that another black person speaks can speak proper English as well. Like, because there's a lot of you know general misconceptions about people who are from it, certain neighborhoods or people, especially where I was working. I was working in <laughs> in Fort Greene, you know, like just really really bad neighborhood. A lot of people of color there that you usually encounter, especially young people, don't tend to have a sentences construct have sentences that are constructed without f bombs and mother effers and. You know what I'm saying? At least they can't go like one two minutes. It's like it's it's right. really hard to encounter it a lot of times. Right. So it, it's like he had this whole general perception about who I was. Like I was like, dude, I'm not even from this neighborhood. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> but even if you were, I mean, like I said, he's, <laughs> like okay, regardless, you're black, you speak well. I'm black, I speak well. Why are you surprised at that? I can see if it was a white guy. Even you know, then, like, but... yeah, I mean, it still shouldn't be, but at least, at least I could understand that. Like you're. Ble- like, how are you surprised by that when you are what you're surprised at? Like, do you, do you not look at yourself in the mirror? Do you not know you were black? Like, and I, I, guess... I told you, like, I, I told you the other story when um, I, I was I was working with Dan. I was doing an installation at um, at this, this this Hispanic lady's house. This Latina lady. I'm not sure exactly. What, I, I believe she was Puerto Rican, but you know, she was there. And, like, we was talking, and I'm like, you know, I'm explaining to her how the system works and how the boxes work and like what I was going to be doing and like how I had to run the cable, just like all the logistics. And she just like, was like, like I, I was like looking out the window, like I'm just like looking and pointing, like not really like talking to like, like really looking at her in her face, but just like showing her bit by bit, like what I'm doing. Cause I'm kind of a, I like to talk with my hands a lot. So like, you know, I, I'm pointing and I'm showing exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh-huh. And so when I finally look at her, she has like this awestruck look at me. Like she just seen the coming of Jesus. And she's like, okay. Oh my gosh, you speak so well. Like, did anybody else say you speak so white? Like, uh. <laughs> it's like, you maybe not want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this relation. I'm about to just leave cables hanging, for real. Like, you about to have no service because you just. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know. I've just gotten to the point where it doesn't even bother me anymore. Like, if someone were to say something like that, I'd be like, oh yeah? Like, I don't really say thank you or anything like that. It's more like, oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, see, yeah, like, see, like me, I would have ended that installation. You know, I would have called up like, "Yo, this lady's racist." <laughs> and I would have, I would have called, I would hit him up. This lady's racist. She's saying, you know, racial things to me about me being black and 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 I'm, and I'm supposed to be able to speak properly because I'm black. And all <laughs> I, I, I'm Does dead. it have to go to that extreme? Yes, it would have went to that extreme. That's <laughs> why. It's because she's ignorant and she just insulted me, and I'm not, I'm not gonna then turn around and. And service her home after she just said that ignorant nonsense to me. No, are God. you truly insulted though? Yeah, I would have been. I mean, like I said, it doesn't happen to me like I mean, that. So, like, I don't but know. Yes, I, I would be insulted that's a good because, to me, because what I you're don't saying, know if I'm truly insulted when people say it anymore. I just think that I'm just, I'm just pissed off at their level of ignorance more than anything. I'm not truly insulted. I'm, I'm not. But I'm just pissed off at the level of just ignorance that is still lingering, especially when I hear from people of color because it's like, it's 2011. Do yeah. You really, well, do you really believe that still? I guess because I am who I am, I automatically just think everyone is racist by default. And then <laughs> if they show otherwise, then I'm like, ah, oh, he's not racist. <laughs> you know, like, so I just yeah, take it I that would, way. Yeah, but I, I personally would have been insulted for the, because to me, what you're saying is based on you looking at me, you thought I was an idiot. You thought I was a, a moron. You thought I was a monkey. And then when I open my mouth and speak, like, oh, he, you know, he, He's not. He's not some jungle bunny. <laughs> That's basically see, what you just said to me. So, see, you know, the, the reason you why you just insulted it. me without without having to to call me nigger. You basically call me a, a dumb street nigger without saying those <laughs> words. That's basically what you just said to me. So, 
Yeah, maybe I'm, you're reading. I mean, I, I mean, I take it like that, but I don't because, like, I, unfortunately, like, a lot of the jobs that I've, I've held, like, I've had to work in like inner city. Like, I understand that a lot of times people of color, especially in poor neighborhoods and poor surroundings, the only thing that they are accustomed to, the only thing that they are exposed to, is a certain type of something. You know, right. and a lot of times it's negative. So if right. all you see is a bunch of ill-spoken monkey type language all day, a lot of times, like, because I used to, I used to work with kids. And like the kids were amazed. Like the kids was like, "Oh my gosh, how old are you? What? You you're a guy. You're a black man, and you like yeah, those you are, speak." Those are kids, though. Those no, but, but, it's, but, but it comes from somewhere though. That's all they're exposed to. Like they grow up. They're like, "No, nah, you're making excuses for that lady, son." Because it, nah, I mean, like, let me ask you. Let me ask you. He really let is. Me ask you, let me ask you this then. No, I'm, I'm not making excuses. For that. I'm just saying I understand some of the some of the mental conditioning that has been done to people of color as well that right. come from poorer. Especially poor areas and in, in like in our city, and how they haven't been exposed to better culture and, and, and people of color that look like them and, and walk like them and like right. have gone through things they've gone through. They they they're surprised when they see people like that who sound different, who talk like they have some education. It's right. something that that's kind of sad, actually. It's, my it's a prejudice, and we all have it. Yeah, we do, but my but my thing is this: like, let's say, like, if I met you and I and for, based on how you were dressed, how you were walking, and I just thought you were you were one of these street niggas, and you started talking and you were intelligent, I wouldn't then be surprised. I would just be, oh, okay, he's not he's not an idiot, but I wouldn't be shocked, like, oh my god, you you speak you speak properly, nigga, like, no, I'm, I would accept that. Okay, this is an intelligent dude, he speaks properly. I wouldn't get shocked about it to the point like I gotta point out the fact that you can speak properly because I was so taken aback by by the fact that it just happened that's the part that's ridiculous to me well you have to respect the fact that not everyone is going to react the same way to everything well my problem is let's say this right that same lady if you were a white guy speaking properly or a white guy speaking bad english would she would she have said to that guy oh my god you speak so proper or oh my god you 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 sound so ignorant for a white guy see this is the thing too though would she have said that like we see this is the problem with our like to me this is the problem with like our cultural boundaries and like the prejudice that has that exists still inside our current society is that even though it's not blatantly in your face there's so many undercover things like our kids unfortunately like our people of color they're taught that they're supposed to sound like monkeys and that white people are supposed to sound like intelligent dude hey 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 guy like that's what we're taught so a lot of times when people they don't that 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 mentality doesn't shed from you. You grow up as a grown ass adult who lives and have kids of their own, still breathing with that mentality, and you pass that shit along to your kids. And yeah, you know it's it's that's how I take it. And in some cases, not okay. So I, I'll point out a prejudiced, racist motherfucker in a minute, like whatever. But sometimes I do have to step back and understand that people are so just trapped in their own darkness that they have no idea what other lights are going on out there. Right. I, I and at the same time, I have my, I mean, I'm not racist, but of course I have my own prejudices as well, because if I were to see a white guy with a polo shirt on tucked into khaki pants and he walked up and said to me, he was popping my nigga. How you, you know, like I'd be like, what the hell? Like that would throw me off. You don't expect that. See, for, yeah. That but see, but you expect that dude. That's, see, that's the thing though. You, dress you dress expect that dude what? because that's like him almost being something that you consider him not to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, cause spoken proper English for some reason we have associated with being white. Right. Talking slang is black. Like that's right. When all it is is really urban. It doesn't right. matter just, what race a, you are. Right. It's just like it's just it's just a, a way of speech. Like most right. of slang or you know whatever. A lot of our, our our cultural like mis like the way that we communicate has been passed along to all kinds of cultures because of things right. like hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like exactly. So it's, you know. Exactly. I I actually heard a story where my friend uh, was telling me like in Africa. Um, they they uh they do something. There's some kind of weird sport over there where they they ride trains or something like that. Like they s- train surf, and the guy yeah. got a lot of his like his culture, the way he speaks and such. He got it from watching TV shows and listening to a lot of hip hop and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he actually calls himself my nigga, and everyone in Africa like that's what they call him my nigga. Like they don't even <laughs> for some reason realize the the gravity of what they're saying because from hip hop you know he picked this up and that's what he dubbed himself so I, that that kind of threw me off in Africa of all places but you know 
uh, as you guys were saying, it's just basically uh, an urban thing. You could be Hispanic, white, black, Indian, doesn't matter. If you grow up in an urban setting and that's how everyone around you speaks, chances are you're going to adopt that method of speaking as well. And it really has nothing to do with race. I don't know. That, I that's, just feel... that's fine with me. I understand that. But it's just a fact for you to be surprised that uh, uh, another human being speaks proper English is what's what's ridiculous to me. It's like what, and like I said, it's not. It's just because of their color. Like you wouldn't say that to somebody else of another color. Like yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that to anyone. I would just I be. Either. I wouldn't either. I'd be like, okay, you're unless it was a person. Like kid, I said, and that like, would be it. Even if it was a little kid, I wouldn't be. So, okay, you're an intelligent person. Like wh- why? Why would I be shocked? At the fact that intelligent people no, exist I on mean, the planet, no, regardless no. of your color. I like, would be completely <laughs> shocked if a little black kid came up to me and he's just like using SAT level words and stuff. Right, you, you'd be like, surprised. I, my jaw would hit the floor. Like, yeah. be, no, what? <laughs> exactly, and it's supposed to. Because like, he's supposed <laughs> to you know, pick that little kid up and his parents. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, that's why I said, like, if it's depending on the circumstances, the, like, it was a kid coming up to me and he has this, like, like you said, like, go with this SAT level of, <laughs> of um, just. Eloquence, I, yo, I'm, yo, I'm hitting that kid off. I might get yeah. some money out of my pocket. Like, yo, <laughs> congratulations, young man. Exactly. Yeah, you'd be proud of him, but you wouldn't be, but you, you would be shocked. I'd be shocked. Yo, I worked, I'd really? be shocked. I worked in the school system, Twisted. I would not be shocked. I would not be shocked. I would be shocked. Because yo, you know I would that, probably you know dance that, a jig. But you know that they are. See, now you're going to take it back to the, to the, to the jiggable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dance a jig. <laughs> oh, that's all of me. Come on, son. I'll dance a jig. I'll dance. <laughs> you just set this podcast back 400 years, man. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it's, it's sad, but I mean, it's just like, unfortunately, like, like I said, like, I, I do have a, a bit of a different background because I, like, I have worked in the school system and I have, like, had an opportunity to work with, like, our kids of color, like, young kids of color. And it's like, yo, the things that you see on a day to day basis, like, our generations. Oh, our younger generations, man, it, it makes you really worried about, like, recessions and stuff like that. Like, this oh, is, like, yeah, oh, yeah, very worried. It I'm... makes you very worried because it's like, regardless of the fact that like, you go to college today, right now, and you still have a hard time with a degree out your ass, still trying to find proper employee. I, I go to juniors and you you my waiter. Like, that's but beyond that. But, like, you got kids that are growing up right now who are way lost in the sauce, don't have any kind of chance of of getting that kind of education because of their environment or because of their parents or because of whatever you want to blame it on. Yo, it's, it's scary. So, I mean, if I see a kid that can spit some type of eloquence to me that, that I, I feel that I deem that is way, way above his level and his grade. Yeah. I have to, I have to give that kid some type of props and some type yeah, of some recognition is deserved. recognition, man, because I don't, because you don't see it. You go, yeah. especially you go to, you go to the school. So you just don't see it, man. I agree. This kid barely read. I, I was like, Damn. Like, <laughs> no, no, it, it's, I'm not even trying to be funny. No, I was, no, you're not, but I, it's just the thought of it. Like, I was a part of a, a, a reading program. We have kids who are like in the eighth grade and have third grade reading levels. I mean, not cool. You know what I'm saying? So a kid can bust out <laughs> some crazy SAT word. Yo, get that man a five. No, yeah. literally, get, get that man, get that little kid a five dollar bill out your pocket or something. Like, and, and and give his parents, you know, some credit too, because it, it's hard. I would assume, not that I'm a parent or anything, but I I would make the assumption that today being a parent is extremely difficult. So the fact that they're able to pull that off, and he still be within a uh, an urban setting where he has all these things just working against him, definitely a positive thing. So I mean, like I think I think I think it's almost your moral. Your, your, your cultural responsibility <laughs> to kind of big that kid up. You know what I'm saying? And, and show recognition to him. Yeah. It's, 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 it's ugly out there, man. Definitely. Like, Some positive reinforcement so that he continues on the right track can't hurt. Yes, yeah. indeed. And, and at that point, we're pushing almost two hours on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so does that bring us to the conclusion? Yeah, unless you got something else you want to get into. Not that I can think of, sir. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. This has been episode 13 of the Twisted Perf Podcast. It's your boy, Goat the Great. Yes, sir. Special guest, The Hawk. What's up? Yes, yes. Beautiful podcast. Yes, is, is, uh, is Crystal still there? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm here. All right. Thank you for, for coming on and yes, thank listening you. to us ramble 
<laughs> like a bunch of chickens clucking in a damn farm. Yes, indeed. It's your boy, son, twisted them out. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>